welcome to the 39th lecture of combinatorics. In the last class we had seen different sequences. So, this was the thing. So, we had uh, some sequence say something like h 0, h 1, h 2, h 3, h 4 and so on. The first order different sequence say written in the this we say that is the 0th row, uh, 0th row and this is the 0th order different equation or uh, different sequence. Uh, so, th the sequence itself is called uh, the 0th order different sequence and here it is uh, h 1 minus h 0 which we write as delta of h 0. Uh, we will write delta of h 1 for h 2 minus h 1 and delta of h 2 for h 3 minus uh, h 2 and so on right. So, this will be delta h 3. So, this sequence uh, in the first line first row is uh, the first order difference sequence. Now, if I take the difference between delta of h 1 and delta of h 0, delta of h 1, delta h 1 minus delta h 0 is delta square h 0 and this is delta square h 1, this is delta square h 2, this means delta, so the gap here, right. Similarly, this is corresponds to the gap here, this corresponds to the gap here, this minus this, this minus this, this minus this like that. This sequence is the second order. Like that in the uh, pth row we will have the pth order difference equation. So, this will be like here somewhere here pth order delta raise to p uh, of h 0 delta raise to p of h 1 and so on right. So, this table is called uh, the difference table and uh, right it is the difference table this is what we saw in the last class these concepts were introduced. Now, we will look at one property of the difference table when the underlying sequence h 0, h 1, h 2 etcetera uh, are given by the general term h n uh, say uh, it is a polynomial in pth degree say n p say it is something like a 1. So, suppose it is something like uh, a p into n raise to p plus a p minus 1 into n raise to p minus 1, p minus 1 plus like that until a 0. So, if this general term can be represented using a polynomial, the pth degree polynomial, the pth degree polynomial in n, so where a p not equal to 0, that is so why it is a pth degree polynomial. Then, uh, if you make the difference table, we will see that this being the 0 throw, the p plus 1 throw onwards is fully 0, p plus 1 throw will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, something like this. Until the p throw, we will have some entries probably. So, but after that, uh, some non zero entries, after that, we will see only 0s, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0. This we saw in the last class by taking an example where it was an n square uh, 2 n square plus 3 n plus 1. So, when h n was equal to 2 n square plus we saw that from the third row onwards third row when first row is called uh, the 0 row. So, uh, so if you really count the rows it is the fourth row because if first row is the sequence itself, but sec so, but we call it 0 row. So, first row, second row, third row onwards we will we were uh, seeing all zeros for this thing right. This is a general fact uh, that is what we were we were trying to prove. So, we will do it by induction. Suppose, the degree of the polynomial is 0. 
so degree of the polynomial the p it is a p degree p -th degree polynomial so degree p polynomial suppose p equal to 0 then it is a constant then the sequence itself will look like c c c c c c c now if you take the first order difference equation difference sequence then we will get 0 0 0 0 0 that means the this gap these gaps are always 0 right so therefore uh, we see that um, the this being the yeah so this here being a 0 degree polynomial so this is the 0th line this first line is the 0th line the second line will be will be called the first line first row right so the p plus 1 equal to 1 here the first row is 0 and then onwards we only get zeros right because the second uh, degree second order difference equation is going to be also zeros because anyway it's all zeros from starting from here so therefore uh, we infer that right we infer that um, so when p equal to 0 the statement is true now we will prove we will assume that up to uh, p minus 1th degree polynomial so 1th degree the polynomial ok degree uh, polynomials it is true that means if the general h n can be written as a p minus 1 degree polynomial then we can uh, we assume that the statement is true that means if you go to the p row of the difference table that will be 0 and from there onwards it will be 0 only. Now let us consider uh, the general term uh, where the degree of the polynomial representing the general term is p right that means h n equal to a p into n raised to p plus a 0 right. Now uh, let us look at the general term sorry the uh, we will by induction hypothesis we know that uh, for any p minus 1 degree polynomial or less uh, when the general term is a polynomial of degree p minus 1 or less in n then uh, the statement is true that means p rho onwards is uh, 0. But now here for this case we have to show that the p plus 1 throw onwards is uh, p, p plus 1 throw onwards is um, right is 0 is what we want to show right. Now if you if I find delta of h n what do we get means the first order difference sequence for this thing if I uh, evaluate for any n right. So, it will look like this say a p into n plus 1 raise to because this is what this is h n plus 1 h n plus 1 minus h n right. So, this is a p into n plus 1 raised to p up to a 0 minus a p into n raised to p a 0 sorry ok this is what it is. Now, if you are looking for the coefficient of n raised to p in the expansion right. So, after um, uh, taking the difference. So, what will you do? So, because, because from here onwards none of the terms of n raised to p because they are all p minus 1 degree onwards 
uh, here only one term has n raised to p. So, the, they only contribute to that. So, the gen the coefficient of n raised to p in the resulting polynomial will be um, a will be coming from these two terms a p into n plus 1 raised to p and uh, minus a p into n raised to p. But here if you take the binomial theorem expand it this will be n raised to p into p choose 1 into n raised to p minus 1 and so on. So, finally 1 right. So, minus a p into n raised to p. So, here this n raised to p and this this a p into n raised to p and this a p into n raised to p will cancel. We will end up getting p minus p choose 1 n raised to p minus 1 plus finally 1 right. So, we only have uh, terms involving n raised to p minus 1 or less in this uh, difference right. So, in other words the coefficient of n raised to p will be 0 uh, when I take this thing right. So, this delta of h n is uh, the first order is the first order difference sequence that its general term is a polynomial in n of degree p minus 1 or less right. So, therefore, we can but now for such polynomials this for uh, we know that delta p of h n is actually delta p minus 1 of delta h n right. So, if you want to get the p th order difference sequence for h n. So, we only have to consider this sequence delta of h n and take the p minus order, order p minus first order difference. In the difference table it is clear. So, for this sequence where this this is this corresponds to the 0 throw the difference table we are looking for the p throw and uh, so in the difference table corresponding if this is considered as the 0 throw then we are actually looking for the p minus o these rows are same. So, this this is both are going to be equal right. So, therefore, uh, we can uh, but then this we have already seen that is represented by a polynomial in n uh, whose uh, degree is p minus 1 or less. Now, by we can apply the induction hypothesis. So, we are only thinking about the p minus 1 th degree uh, p minus 1 th uh, uh, order difference that means this will correspond to the p throw p throw of the difference table for this one. Um, so, here so ok this is essentially the p plus 1 throw sorry. Uh, yeah, so we want we actually this is correct. So, what, what we want to show is that so the p plus 1 throw namely delta p plus 1 of h n is equal to 0 is what we want to show right. We want to show that this is equal to 0 right. So, this will this will be equal to delta p of delta of h n right. Now, this being a p minus 1 degree polynomial this, this row this delta p of this thing this p row here is going to be 0 that we already know. So, therefore, delta p plus 1 of h n is also going to be 0 right. So, if from the difference table what we have done is we considered the first sequence right. We want to show that the p plus 1 throw is going to be now 0. So, the first row being considered 0 throw, uh, but uh, to prove that we we produce the first row right. First row happens to be a uh, is uh, can be represented by the general term uh, which is a polynomial in n of degree p minus 1 or less. Now, this p plus 1 throw for the first table the other table this table is going to be the p throw for this right. So, we know by induction hypothesis that because it is a polynomial of degree p minus 1 only. So, this row is going to be 0. So, so the original this thing is also 0. So, in this notation you have to write accordingly right. The p plus 1 throw correspond to the delta raise to p plus 1 right. So, here starting from here when I tell delta of h n this this correspond to this thing delta p of delta of h n correspond to this row right the same row ok. Mm, so, therefore, yeah it is an easy proof just apply the induction 
uh, one has to carefully write the symbols that is all. Then uh, yeah, this is one property about the polynomials when uh, the sequence is actually uh, the general term of the sequence is actually a polynomial in n uh, of degree p. So, then the p plus 1 throw the difference table is going to be 0 and there on it is 0 only. Uh, another property of the difference table is its linearity property. What is the linearity property of the difference uh, table? This is very familiar we if you have if you have seen this, this kind of properties before. Uh, it can be represented like this. Suppose gn is a sequence and fn is a sequence. That means gn represents the general term of a sequence and fn represents the general term of another sequence. Let c and d be constants. Then delta p of c times gn plus d times fn is equal to c times delta p of gn plus d times delta p of fn p greater than or equal to 0. Right. Now, uh, if you want to carefully this, suppose we have this g n sequence. So, when you write the difference table it will look like this we will write g 0, g 1, g 2 like this g 3 something like this. So, this will be delta of g 0, delta of g 1 and delta of g 2 and so on. This will be delta of square of g 0. So, this will be the difference table corresponds to g n. So, similarly we will have one difference table for we can write a reference over f n f 0, f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4 and so on this will be delta of f 0, delta of f 1, delta of f 2 and so on this will be delta square of f 0, delta square of this is the difference table corresponding to f 1. Now, what we are saying is what about adding this g n and f n together that means every term here g 0 will become uh, f 0 plus g 0 the sum g 0 plus f. So, the if you add g n plus f n what we get is c g 0 plus f 0 right uh, g 1 plus f 1 g 2 plus f 2 and so on this will be the new sequence. Now, if you take if you want to consider the second uh, first row of this thing that difference table the new difference table difference table for f n plus g n right. So, we have to minus this thing this is g 1 minus g 0 right g 1 minus g 0 plus f 1 minus f 0 which is nothing but g 1 minus g 0 is actually delta g 0 and this is actually delta f 1. So, f 0. So, this is delta g 0 plus delta f 0 right. Similarly, this will be delta. So, if I take the minus here you can easily see that this g 2 minus g 1 which is delta g 1 this is f 2 minus f 1 that is delta f 1. So, this is delta g 1 plus delta f 1 right. So, delta of f n plus g n is clearly delta of f n plus delta of g n right. This is one thing which you can easily observe. Similarly, we can easily see that if you have uh, a sequence say g 0, g 1, g 2 etcetera and I multiply with the constant that means c this is the new sequence suppose right. So, this is the new sequence c times g 3, c times g 4 and so on. Now, if you take the difference thing. So, if I consider c g 1 minus c this is delta of g 0 that is c into g 1 minus g 0 only will get which is a which is actually c times delta of g 0. Similarly, when I take c g so here the gap c into delta of g 1 this will be c into delta of g 2 and so on right. When you take the difference here this is c into delta square of g 0 this is c into delta square of g 1 and so on. This is c into delta cube of uh, g 0 and so on right which you can easily see that uh, from which you can easily see that uh, if g n is a sequence and c g n is the new sequence right. So, then delta of c g n is going to be c times delta of g n and actually we can extend it to delta of p of c times g n 
is equal to c times delta p of g n right. Uh, this second statement can easily be proved by induction because uh, we proved it for the p equal to 1 case. Now, if you want to prove it for uh, general p what we see is that delta uh, raised to p of g n c times g n uh, is actually we apply uh, this is as this is delta into delta delta of delta p minus 1 of c times g n right this is what it is. So, now if you apply this thing on this right we know already we have proved already for the p equal to 1 case this is essentially uh, sorry first we apply here because by induction we know that uh, this is this this we can write this portion we can write as c times delta p minus 1 of g n right. So, now we can apply this thing we already because for p equal to 1 we have already proved. So, that is c into delta of delta p minus 1 of g n. So, which is essentially c times delta p of g n this is the uh, situation right. So, now similarly we, we could have proved uh, delta p of g n plus f n is equal to delta p of g n plus delta p of f n right. So, this is this also follows by induction the same same kind of argument right. Now, from both of this thing what we can infer is delta p of the c times g n plus d times f n where d and uh, c are some constants this is what first we apply the first rule. So, this will be delta p of c times g n plus delta p of uh, d times f n this way we can write and then we can uh, apply the second rule namely this is equal to c times delta p of g n uh, plus d times delta p of f n right this is what it is this is the uh, linearity property right. So, which essentially means that uh, if you have this difference tables right yeah you, this table and this table when you create uh, if you want to create the difference table for g n plus f n we can simply add for instance term by term we can add g 0 plus f 0 is added here. Uh, so, the first row is obvious because that is a by definition, but the second row also we can add. So, uh, this and this will add and will stay just be below the so in this gap right the first gap. Uh, so, similarly or or other words the first order difference sequence also uh, is a sum of this first order difference sequence and this difference. Similarly, the second order difference sequence also can be added. So, that is what we are saying uh, actually if you are multi similarly if you are multiplying the difference table the first row the difference table by a constant uh, every term is multiplied then all the coming rows also will get that multiplier and then when you want to add them together naturally we can add the tables that is what uh, if you if you want to visualize using the tables this is what it says right. It is a very simple property, but uh, if you just think for some time you uh, get it very clearly. Now, now this is the linearity property of that. Now, uh, another interesting property of this difference table is that this difference table can be completely written down if you know the 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 starting terms in each row. We know very well that if the sequence itself is given the difference table can be for instance if the first row of the, the 0th row of the difference table is known then the difference table can be completely written down right completely written down as long as yeah. So, we are ready to write if there are infinite rows then of case we can so it is completely determined anyway right. So, uh, but that is because that is the way we are defining because once the first uh, sequence is given then the first order uh, sequ uh, different sequence is written and the second order different sequence is written and so on. Now, we are telling we can also do uh, the create this difference table if we had known these things delta of this one 
and delta of h 0 which is essentially the first uh, term in the second uh, the first row uh, term in the first row this is the 0 row this is the 0 row uh, this being the first row this first term and here delta square of h 0 this is delta square of h delta cube of h 0 if these terms are known then also we can completely complete this table why so i am assuming that i don't know anything here right i know only this 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 and so on how can i write so first i write this this is um, uh, what i want because i know that this this term is uh, this h1 minus h0 right so this h0 i know right so clearly i can create h1 right delta of h0 and h uh, so delta h0 uh, plus plus h1 will h0 will create h1 right so that means this can be created by adding so this is h0 adding these two things right i can if i add these two things i i will get this right so this will be h1 because h1 minus h0 is this so this plus this is this similarly this here this number here this number here can be created by adding this and this because this minus this this number minus this is this so this plus this will be this right so this will be what delta uh, square of h0 plus delta h0 will be this because we know both of this thing i can write it down similarly i can write this number uh, by adding this and this right so like that i can create this entire second diagonal this is being the this being the zeroth diagonal the first diagonal we can create this is the leftmost diagonal so this uh, left edge of the table you can see this is first and after that the next uh, diagonal can be created and then next diagonal can be created how we will add this this and this and we get this thing right so we will add uh, why is it so because this number is produced by this minus this right Mi this number minus this was this so therefore to get this number we just have to add this and this similarly this number is produced by uh, this number minus this number is this so in this row right so therefore to get this thing you just have to add this thing. so once you know this diagonal so you can produce the next diagonal and so on right so it's very clear that uh, if you if you know this left edge completely then we can create the rest of the difference table to summarize what i am telling is uh, you can uh, this your difference table is completely determined either by your first uh, zero row, which is essentially h0 h1 h2 sequence at all which is not at all surprising because that is the way we define the uh, difference table but what is interesting is it can also be completely generated if you if somebody gives you only this left edge or zeroth diagonal of the uh, difference table namely these numbers h0 delta h0 delta square h0 delta cube h0 and so on this comp this number so on alone are given then we can write down these numbers then we can write down these numbers and then we can write down these numbers and so on completely we can generate the entire see entire table uh, from this thing so uh, the difference table is uh, determined either by this line or this line right the rest automatically follows so then what is the advantage of having this thing the advantage is that this line can be say some in for some cases if this first zeroth row is actually an infinite sequence in the sense that there are infinite number of uh, non zero entries there right it may so happen that uh, in this diagonal we have only a finite number of non zero entries that may make our life easier and you may wonder what situation in what situation it happens we have already mentioned one situation which is important enough uh, i mean uh, to motivate this study so namely the when hn is a, is of the form see a 
p n raised to p plus a p minus 1 a p minus 1 n raised to p minus 1 plus a 0 that means h n has the form of a polynomial in n right uh, of degree p say then we have seen that if you look at this sequence of numbers namely h 0 h delta h 0 delta square h 1 h 0 delta cube h 0 this this will go up to delta p h 0 but delta p plus 1 h 0 onwards we are going to have zeros this is going to be 0 why because I know the p plus 1 throw is going to be 0 that is what we proved in the previous theorem right we have shown that if the general term is given by a polynomial in n of degree p then the p plus 1 throw onwards is going to be 0 p plus 1 throw p plus 2 throw and so on and in particular the first term of that rows namely delta p plus 1 of h 0 delta p plus 2 of h 0 delta p plus 3 of h 0 all of them will be 0. So, we will have non-zero values possibly up to here not beyond that right. So, this is while if you write down if you try the uh, zero throw it may go on and on because there may be several non-zero entries infinite number of non-zero non entries in the first row. So, that that way we cannot concisely uh, represent this table, but on the other hand uh, if you look at the left edge on the other hand this uh, zeroth diagonal we know that uh, starting from h 0 we will have to consider only delta p of h 0 namely p plus 1 numbers p plus 1 numbers along the zeroth diagonal right this will completely determine the difference table this is the advantage of uh, uh, understanding that so this full difference table can be represented either by the uh, zero row or by the zero diagonal. So now, uh, now that we have this understanding, let's look uh, how we can um, uh, make use of this thing, right? The good thing is, so it, the zero diagonal may look like this: zero, right? C zero, C one, C two, say some C p, and beyond that, it may be all zeros, right? suppose it is a polynomial in the case of polynomials right. Say for instance if for my general term h n was some polynomial uh, of this form that means nth degree polynomial then these numbers 0, c 0, c 1, c 2, c p these numbers may be non-zero but beyond that all of them will be 0 right. But now suppose if this one was 1 and all the others were zeros right if all the others were zeros let us say we can get so let us call it this, this sequence as E p right E p means this sequence is E p say E p right E p 1 E p 2. So, which I mean uh, what I mean is in the Pth row, this being the zero row, this being the first row, this being the second row, this is the pth row. Pth row we have one, all other places uh, we have zeros, all other places in the zeroth diagonal here, here, here. We, we are not bothered about what is going to be in these places as of now, right. So, then this sequence which may we may write it as EP0, EP1, EP2 right this sequence suppose if I can figure out right the general term being E p n right. Then uh, you can easily see that the table which is generated by uh, C 0, C 1, C 2, C p in the main diagonal this kind of a ta table right this table can actually be uh, represented so the so this table will be giving a say for instance some f n right some general term will be coming here for this thing if i if i work out uh, this thing but the general term can be uh, written as uh, f n equal to c 0 into e 0 n plus c 1 into e 1 n plus c n 
uh, CP into EPN. Above that, we do not have the CPs are all zeros, right. So, this can be written uh, like this. Why is it so? Because of the linearity property of this thing, right. Because this term is actually C0 times 1, right. And uh, if you had, if you, you could have decomposed these tables like C0, 1, 1, sorry, this 0, 0, 0, 0, a table corresponding to this, uh, this 0th diagonal and uh, C1, so another table corresponding to 0, C1, 0, 0, 0 and so on and another table corresponding to 0, 0, C2, 0, 0 and so on, right. And if you add these things together, this row will be C0, C1, C2, C3 up to Cp, right. And this particular table C0 itself could have been produced by multiplying the by C0, uh, the table which is produced by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 uh, so, and so on, right. This table can be produced by multiplying the table produced by this left diagonal 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So, therefore, overall, so if you want to get the general term corresponding to the difference table where the 0th diagonal of the difference table is uh, C0, C1, C2, etc. What we do is we create the table corresponding to the 0th diagonal of this form 1, 0, 0 and then multiply by that table, multiply that table by C0. Then we produce uh, the table which corresponds to the 0 diagonal of this form and then multiply by C1 and then add it to the previous one and then we produce the table corresponding to 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and then multiply by C2 and add it to the previous and so on, right. Then up to, we have to do it p plus 1 times, by once for c0, once, once for this, one for this, one for this, one for this, and that will create the general term for this, right. So, but for this to be effective, we should have a very concise and neat formula for uh, the general term corresponding to the, uh, for the sequence corresponding to the uh, difference table produced by this kind of a 0th diagonal, right, this kind of a 0th diagonal. So, here it is uh, the pth position. So, here pth row we have 1, right, this is 0th row, this first row, second row, this so, pth row is uh, having 1, right. Now, if you want to reproduce, I mean the general term here, that means the first row, what will be a chain here, right. Um, now, so you know that how will this, this, this second, uh, sorry, the first diagonal look like. This is the zeroth diagonal, and the first diagonal will look like definitely this and this should be added to get this, this and this should be added to get this, and it will look like this, right? Yeah. And then this, sorry, here we will get 0 and 1, this will be 1, right? Now, here also it will be 1, so but let us discard for the time being. Uh, from here onwards it will be all 0, we know that, uh, so okay, this will be all 0 because 0 plus this one, but here this row we will have something, but for the time being let us let us not worry about this portion. Similarly, if I create this thing, this will be 0, this will be again 0, this will be again 0 and this will be 1, right. And here it will be 0 and then 0 and there will be a 1, so on, right. So, we will we will be getting something like this upward, right. So, 0, 1 and then we have a, uh, then we have a 1 and then we have a 1 like this, we will be, we will be going upward. So, if you have P here, then same thing we will get, right here. So, like this here, we here will, we will have a sequence of 1s going upward like these zeros the same way, right. So, here we have, uh, this is the pth one, right. So, here we have up to p minus 1, uh, th this is a 0th, uh, this, this corresponds to h0, 
right this correspond to h1 this will be hp minus 1 right so and this will be hp hp will be always h hp will be 1 now you know looking at the structure of this thing uh, so let's because you know from uh, till p the, in the p throw we have a 1 then beyond below beyond that we are getting zeros so we are not sure whether uh, yeah so we, we can also examining this thing we can also get that this all these zeros uh, are coming here right because that is the way this and this will add to this this and this will add to this this and will. so it is a very reasonable guess to think that the corresponding uh, general term will be a polynomial in uh, p so we will assume so so if it is a polynomial in p uh, then can we find that polynomial it may look like uh, uh, yeah can we find that polynomial but one good thing is that we know that when we substitute n equal to 0 that polynomial evaluates to 0 when you substitute n equal to 1 that polynomial evaluates to 1 and when i substitute uh, n equal to 2 that polynomial evaluates to 0 and so on so here because this first uh, row is something like 0 0 0 0 0 and suddenly the pth term is becoming 1 right. So, therefore, we can see that uh, we have h 0 is equal to 0 right h 1 equal to 0 say like that h p minus 1 is also equal to 0 and we have h p equal to 1 this is what we see right. <coughs> So, what does it mean? So, we know that if it is a polynomial in n then the roots are 0, 1, p minus 1 we all got all the p roots of it. So, it will look like 1 n minus 0 that polynomial look like n minus 0 into n minus 1 into n minus p plus 1 right n minus p minus n minus p plus 1 uh, and some constant this will this will be that polynomial p of n will look like this right some constant times n minus 0 into n minus 1 into n minus so this is like c into n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus p plus 1 this is the way it will look like now uh, but how will this is p of n but how will i determine the value of c then so to do that we have one more value available this h p equal to 1 that means when you substitute n equal to p. So, this I can I can use a different symbol for this so, let us say h of n. So, h of n no, sorry f of n for that polynomial let me use yeah this kind of a p right p of x right because I, I am just confusing with this p. Now, I will just substitute n equal to p then this will look like c into p into p minus 1 up to p minus p plus 1 up to 1. That means our constants but value of this thing is already known right. So, right or I can always use the h itself for the polynomial only thing is that let me use the capital H for the to denote that it is a polynomial right H of n right H of n. So, to so n is to be considered as a variable here in this polynomial. So, this H 0 H 1 etcetera are the terms of the sequence okay, small n I just use capital letters to denote that it is we are talking about a polynomial right. So, let me see this is H of p. So, h of p actually will evaluate to h p right which is actually 1 right this is this is equal to c into this is what p factorial. So, this c is equal to 1 by p factorial right. So, what is our answer? So, we can substitute this 1 by p factorial here. So, we will get h of n is equal to 1 by p factorial into uh, 
n into n minus 1 into so n minus p plus 1 this is very familiar to us this is actually n choose p right so n choose p which is which also can be written as n p falling factorial by p factorial right so this this is the n falling factorial and falling starting from n n n into n minus 1 into n minus p plus 1 right so this way we can write or just write n choose p right so the polynomial corresponding to the sequence which uh, which corresponds to the difference table whose 0th diagonal is 0 0 0 up to p so up to the pth position we have a 1 and then 0 0 0 so 0 0 0 and the pth position we have a 1 and then 0 0 0 0 will be n choose p right so n choose p n falling factorial p n is taken as a variable here and falling factorial p divided by p factorial this is what now uh, we know that if the we are considering the difference table for c0 c1 c2 this suppose 0 diagonal look like this cp and then we know that 0 0 0 and then if you create this first zeroth uh, row and then what will be hn what will be the general term here right we know that this will correspond to uh, the by the linearity property of this difference tables right so we can multiply uh, the c0 into e0n which is we know already this n to 0 right c0 into n to 0 plus c1 into this c1 into e1 n we know this one is c1 into what uh, n choose 1 and up to p we can do cp into n choose p right because if you just turn 1 1 in 1 in this position and everywhere else it was 0 then that will correspond to n choose p p being the uh, row number where the one has occurred occurred right so if one had occurred in the 0th row we will get this one first row it for the first place of the first row I mean so then it will be uh, this and the first place of the same. and the multipliers are definitely c0 c1 up to cp and when you add up we will get like this right. So uh, if the difference table look like c0 c1 c2 up to cp and then 0 0 0 etc. So we see that our hn the general term corresponding to the sequence coming from this difference table is actually sigma i equal to 0 to p c i uh, n choose i right so this will be the uh, general term for such a sequence so that is what we are getting so now yeah so the only th one thing we have forgotten to discuss is that right we have figured out a polynomial which will correspond to this general this kind of a zeroth diagonal and then right so yeah it's easy to verify that this polynomial uh, and choose p actually corresponds to this uh, zero table we guessed it first but then we saw that up to here it is satisfying so up to the p p plus so zero term first term up to p term it's satisfying now we can see that this thing uh, this portion of this different stable is following from that if it is satisfying this much and up to here it is satisfied right. So and then we know it is a this n choose p is a polynomial of degree uh, so sorry up to here so this is what I mean is 0 0 0 1 right this is the pth position. So this portion of the table so where this is 0 to p terms here 
so see h0 h1 h2 hp and this is up to 0 1 2 up to p throw right this much anyway will follow if you can definitely see that this is 0 0 0 1 then we will get 0 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 1 and this portion of the table will come and from here onwards the uh, therefore up to here it is actually giving the um, zero diagonal as we want it and uh, since n choose p is a polynomial in degree p p plus 1 throw onwards we should have 0 0 onwards so this will also satisfy the remaining things that is why we, we just have to verify that after getting this answer n choose p that uh, it actually corresponds to the table it corresponds to a table where the 0th diagonal is looking like 0 0 0 0 and a 1 in the pth row and then uh, 0 0 0 right and uh, you know once this this is matching the 0 diagonal is matching the entire table will match right so we do not have to worry more than that and then once that is true then uh, it was only the linearity property we used and then we just can uh, multiply the corresponding terms with c0 c1 c2 etc and then we end up with this formula for the general term now we can simplify a little bit suppose um, yeah so this can be written as yeah hn equal to right sigma i equal to 0 um, to p ci assuming that the diagonal so the the main diagonal look like c0 c1 c2 cp and then 0 0 0 right uh, the, the first zero diagonal look like this cp into this is n choose i right but this n choose i as we have mentioned is n i falling factorial divided by i factorial so now this can be written as sigma i equal to 0 to p c i by i factorial into n i falling factorial right so this is uh, this polynomial can be represented by this see we can say h of n this h of n can be represented by this actually is uh, nth general term so general term for the n so if you want to write it as polynomial uh, we can write h of n so can be represented like this now we will just notice that um, if you are familiar with uh, linear algebra it is not very surprising because if you are talking about a polynomial say h of n which is of degree p right so definitely if you consider the vector space of polynomials of degree p uh, then you know 1 x x square um, x raised to p form a basis for this thing this polynomials also if you want to use n 1 n n square n raised to p form a basis for this thing similarly it is not difficult to show that uh, n choose 0 n choose 1 n choose 2 n choose p which are also polynomials this in 0 it is this is a constant term this being a f degree 1 polynomial polynomial of degree 2 here this is degree p polynomial this also form a basis for h of n and uh, naturally you can simplify this thing and say that n 0 factorial which is a constant n 1 falling factorial n 2 falling factorial n p falling factorial i hope uh, you recall the definition of falling factorial so when i say n p falling factorial i mean n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to n minus p plus 1 this is what this, thing, this is also a basis for uh, the vector space and therefore it's not surprising that any polynomial of degree p can be represented as some constant into 
this plus some constant into this plus some constant into this plus some constant into this right it's so it's not at all surprising so but again we want uh, go to linear algebra much so we our the presentation use uh, of case we could have told like this as unique coefficients are there uh, but the previous presentation using difference table gives a little insight into what kind of numbers these things are and also it is not about only about existence we are talking about we are seeing actually the numbers uh, which are appearing here right. So, ok fine. So, then what we have now told is any polynomial can be represented uh, like this. So, as the coefficients of following factorials. As, uh, so, in the basis of uh, using the following factorials we can represent any polynomial. Now, what we are specially interested in is the simple polynomials like n raise to k n raise to p let us say. So, we want to represent n raise to p uh, as i equal to 0 to p right. Um, yeah, we need only up to p for this thing. So, where this is uh, so, we will use C P 0 because we are talking about n, n raise to P C P 0 rather than C 0 C 1 etcetera we will call C C O P comma 0 P of P comma 1 because we are talking about the coefficient of uh, coefficients uh, when we want to represent n raise to P right. So, into uh, n choose P right. So, this numbers are special. So, because we are studying this n raise to p. So, we, we can represent n raise to 0, n raise to 1, n raise to 2 and so on. So, in general uh, this is true because this is true from the previous discussion because n raise to p is just a polynomial in degree p. So, whose degree is p therefore, this is also possible. This co coefficients we, are, we have changed uh, just to note that we are actually representing n raise to p that is why c of p is coming and then this sorry this will go from C P i i equal to 0 to p it will go from uh, i equal to 0 to p. Uh, so, it will look like n raise to p equal to C P 0 into n 2 0 plus C P 1 into n choose 1 and so on till C P p into n choose p. Now, so, this also can be as we have already men mentioned this also can be represented C p 0 by 0 factorial into n 0 falling factorial. So, it is just one constant and then C p 1 by 1 factorial into uh, n 1 falling factorial and so on C p p by p factorial into n p falling factorial these numbers C P K by K falling factorial appearing here will be the Stirling numbers S P K. So, we will show that this is the same Stirling numbers we have defined Stirling numbers of the second kind that we have defined before using combinatorial using a combinatorial definition by uh, we will what our strategy is to show that this S P K these numbers actually satisfy the same recurrence relation and initial conditions as the uh, previous the, the Stirling numbers of the second kind we which we defined using the combinatorial uh, interpretation right. So, that is what we will do in the next class. Mm -hmm.